accuracy downfield with receivers he's never thrown with. It is impossible. They go 98 yards. There he is again. I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but games like last night literally make me feel like the NFL is scripted sometimes just based upon what we were seeing and how we were watching it unravel. There was a point where I was a little skeptical about what was going on because you could not have written a better game for Thursday Night Football. For both sides, this has severe implications. And for one human in particular, this completely alters the course of his career. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow i'm going to be posting additional picks this week for my prize picks on my instagram story if you guys are interested in that and if you haven't signed up a link to that's in the description down below now that we get all of that out of the way break. It's challenging being a sports fan in California because they did not pass the prop that allows us to gamble on games. So we had to look for some alternatives and we did. Introducing Prize Picks, a very simple daily fantasy sports game, which in my opinion is better. Prize Picks is available in 30 states, DC and Canada. And it's very simple. All you do is look at Prize Picks' projections and you choose higher or lower than their projection. And this week they're giving us a free square. Now, if you remember, during Thanksgiving, when they gave us a free square, I gave you guys what I consider to be a lock and we were able to hit on that lock. And we're going for it again. We just need to get one square right for us to 3X our money. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All you have to do is first sign up for prize picks with my link in the description down below or download the app on your phone and use promo code microphone and they'll match up to $100 of your initial deposit. Now, once you're done with that, open up prize picks either on your phone or on your desktop. The very first thing you're gonna do is obviously select like Justin Herbert. His projection is 0.5 passing yards. I don't know what it is. I feel like Justin Herbert at the very minimum will throw for at least one passing yard. So based off of that, we're gonna click more on 0.5 projected passing yards. And for the second square, we're gonna go with the same man that was able to make us money last time. Darius Slayton has been crushing it ever since Wandale Robinson has been injured. And I feel like he is due for at least 55.5 projected receiving yards. I'm going to select him. I'm gonna push more. And if if you get these two correct, then you can 3X your money. Now I play prize picks all the time. If you guys wanna see more of my picks, then make sure you follow me on Instagram or Twitter. And if you sign up for prize picks, make sure you use my link in the description down below so you could get up to a $100 deposit match from them. So you have more money to play with. And thank you prize picks for the sponsor. My check one, two, one, two. What's going on everybody? My apologies for not being able to bring this to you guys immediately. Following the game on Thursday night football, we've had a lot of content recently Recently, and I took last night for myself to rest a little bit. But the Baker Mayfield saga is clearly a storyline that we've been following very, very closely on this channel this year. I mean, to a nauseating degree to some of my subscribers. And honestly, it's been one of the most fun stories that I've ever had the opportunity to cover. When you go all the way back to last year, when Baker Mayfield began this very unusual journey, starting with Odell Beckham Jr.'s dad calling him out, OBJ would eventually get released as a result of Baker Mayfield not targeting him enough. You also have the fact that Baker Mayfield Mayfield had a torn labrum and was trying to be the hero for the Cleveland Browns playing through it last year. But unfortunately, he did not look like a good quarterback while he was playing through that torn labrum. That led to the Cleveland Browns deciding that, hey, we decided to select this man with the number one overall pick, but we're going to move on from him for Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson originally rejected the Cleveland Browns, but the Browns were so hell bent on getting an upgrade at the quarterback position that in addition to offering a 2022, 2023, and 2024 first round pick, in addition, to a third-round pick in 2022 and a fourth-round pick in 2024, they offered Deshaun Watson a fully guaranteed $240 million contract. That's how much the Browns wanted to upgrade from Baker Mayfield. This insulted Baker Mayfield. I mean, the moment they started contacting each other, it insulted Baker Mayfield, and he posted a very hearty farewell to his Instagram page. A couple months later, Baker Mayfield made it known that he felt betrayed, 
And as a result, the Browns traded him to the Carolina Panthers for a conditional fourth round pick. But we all know that would eventually turn into a fifth round pick because Baker Mayfield would not succeed with the Carolina Panthers. He would play horrifically, but that was also a really bad situation for him. Considering how Matt Rule was on the hot seat from the very beginning, how he was fired a few weeks into the season, how an interim head coach took over for Matt Rule after Baker Mayfield had a few moments to finally sit down with the playbook. And then Baker Mayfield just turning out horrible game after horrible game. And then there being additional pressure on Baker, where if he played horrifically, he'd get benched for Sam Darnold or PJ Walker. Eventually, the Panthers decided, hey, we're going to cut ties with Baker Mayfield because once he plays 70% of his snaps, we're going to have to give up a fourth round pick for this guy instead of a fifth. We've seen enough. This guy's not our savior. Let's cut him. The LA Rams were third on the waiver wire when Baker Mayfield hit the waiver wire. Matthew Stafford was injured and they didn't necessarily have much to play for at this point because the Detroit Lions held their first round draft pick this year and currently, well, as of last week, that was good enough to be the fourth overall pick in the NFL draft. So you might as well take a chance on Baker Mayfield and see what would happen if Baker was Matthew Stafford's backup. I mean, after all, Matthew Stafford is getting up there in age. There's been rumors about his injuries going all the way back to the offseason. He clearly didn't look like himself very much this year, and he's currently in his early 30s. Yes, he is technically 10 years younger than Tom Brady, but you really don't know how much football Matthew Stafford really has in him, especially after winning a Super Bowl, especially after making a ton of money, and although he did recently get signed to a contract extension, it's a good idea to have a high-end contingency plan. There's no doubt in my mind, Baker Mayfield needs the Rams. The Rams would like Baker Mayfield, but they don't necessarily need Baker Mayfield, but their union was something beautiful to watch. As I said this in my take a couple of days ago, when the Rams claim Baker Mayfield that this could save his career. This is without a doubt the most respected and probably the most brilliant head coach he's ever been paired with. And I think that really showed on Thursday Night Football. If we were to flip the script to the Las Vegas Raiders, it's a completely different situation. The Raiders came into this game with a 5-7 and seven record. It didn't look like they were going to win the AFC West, but it looked like at the very least they could potentially make it into the playoffs. And they could still make it into the playoffs, but at this point they can't lose any more games. And on top of that, the Raiders came into this game on a pretty nice streak. I mean, they won four of their last five games. Devontae Adams in those five games had 650 yards and seven touchdowns. And to be honest, this game was supposed to be a layup for the Raiders. I mean, you're going up against a Rams team with no Allen Robinson, no Cooper Cup, no Aaron Donald, no Matthew Stafford. This should be a piece of cake. As a matter of fact, Josh Jacobs kind of implied that this was going to be barbecue chicken for him. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't really a, a question for me today. It was, yeah. Especially, nah, I can't say that. Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Barbecue chicken. Barbecue chicken. <laughs> Baked chicken. <laughs> Clearly, coming into this game, if you were a betting man, the Raiders were going to be a pretty safe bet. And once again, like we've seen in multiple games before, the Raiders got out to a double-digit lead versus the Los Angeles Rams in the very beginning. The Rams just looked completely lost out there, and rightfully so. Baker Mayfield was literally a Ram for less than 48 hours before finally taking snaps on national television for the Los Angeles Rams. And then something happened in the fourth quarter. Baker Mayfield was able to drive the LA Rams down and cut the lead to six. Now the Raiders would get the ball back, but the Rams would stop the Raiders once again, which would give Baker Mayfield a little bit under two minutes left to potentially lead the Rams in a game-winning drive. The moment the Rams got the ball back with under two minutes left, with Baker Mayfield under center versus the Raiders, that's when I began to think, damn, this is scripted. As a matter of fact, I tweeted it out in the middle of the game. Baker Mayfield is actually leading a game-winning drive on national television against the Las Vegas Raiders who are notorious for choking double-digit leads while only being a Ram for under 48 hours. I mean, it was like poetry in motion. It was like you were truly watching a great moment in NFL history unfold and I was convinced it was going to happen. We're talking about a team that lost to an ESPN analyst that called out how bad their team was within two weeks prior to taking the Colts job and now they're losing to Baker Mayfield, who was a LA Ram for under two days. Now, Baker Mayfield would have a phenomenal game-winning drive with the Rams that would feature an unsportsmanlike penalty from defensive tackle Jerry Tillery and another major penalty as well, resulting in a game-winning touchdown from Baker Mayfield to Van Jefferson for the LA Rams to win the game. And this is where it gets even more embarrassing. I mean, Baker made sure that the whole world knew how little time he had to be a Ram. 
again. First, he bet on himself and immediately booked a flight to LA the moment he hit waivers because he was convinced that he was going to become a Ram. And he even said it in this interview. I took a gamble. I booked the flight. Uh before the waiver wire went through. Okay. And then, of course, Sean McVay would give Baker Mayfield the game ball for a phenomenal game by Baker. To be able to come in here 10 minutes ago and help lead us to a victory. See you guys on Monday. Baker Mayfield. Yeah! But I think what's even more phenomenal is if you compare the stats of Baker Mayfield with two days to prepare in his debut for the Los Angeles Rams, he went 22 for 35, 230 passing yards, one touchdown, a 91.4 rating. Without a doubt, his best game of this season so far. And then you also mentioned the fact that his best receivers were Ben Skoranek and Tutu Atwell and Van Jefferson. Without a doubt, not the top wide receivers that the LA Rams went into the season with. And then you have to understand how really Really remarkable this feat is. Things like this make me think that the NFL is scripted sometimes. It's not something I truly believe, but I'm just trying to say this is like a fairy tale. And then you compare it to Derek Carr and it looks really bad. Derek Carr has been a Las Vegas Raider for the past eight years. The Raiders have never given up on him. I don't think the Raiders should ever give up on him. He had Devontae Adams. He had Mac Hollins. Yeah, he didn't have Darren Waller. He had Foster Moreau, but he also had Josh Jacobs who literally called the Rams barbecue chicken before this game. And he went a 11 for 20 for 137 passing yards, zero touchdowns, two interceptions, and a 36.9 rating. Oh uh, man. I mean, at that point, I know there's a lot of Derek Carr stands. And to be honest, I don't think Derek Carr is so horrible that you need to move on from him, but this game is definitely on him. I mean, you still had Devontae Adams. You still had all your top receivers. Josh Jacobs had a decent game. I mean, he almost had hundred yards rushing, but it was 3.3 yards per carry. And for the most part, I think the Raiders are trending upward. They're figuring it out a little bit more. They're streaking a little bit more. But man, this is embarrassing. This is the fourth game this season where they were up double digits and then they would end up losing. I mean, if they won all of those games, they would be neck and neck with the Kansas City Chiefs for the top of the AFC West. They'd at the very minimum be a playoff team this season and that's not what's going to happen. Baker Mayfield arrived at SoFi Stadium and exposed the Las Vegas Raiders on national television in the most embarrassing way possible. We're also at the point of the Baker Mayfield cycle where he's proving everyone wrong because he is an underdog right now. But jokes aside, I think Baker Mayfield found a great place for himself. If he understands at this point that he needs to accept his role as a backup and just be a good teammate, otherwise he might not see a spot in this league at all whatsoever for the future, then at the very minimum, I think he could be the backup QB for the LA Rams and maybe even settle into the Jameis Winston role. Now, obviously, the Jameis Winston role didn't work for Jameis Winston. He was originally supposed to be the successor to Drew Brees as a very high potential former number one overall pick. I played in their division, I needed to learn how to mitigate his turnovers. And ultimately, it didn't really work out for him. I mean, it kind of did when he was with Sean Payton for his lone season. In the handful of games he was with Sean Payton, he actually performed fairly well last year. Unfortunately for him, Sean Payton would move on and Dennis Allen would take over. And clearly the offense doesn't look like what it used to. But who knows? Maybe this works out for Baker. Maybe Matthew Stafford has a couple more injured games. It's not necessarily something I'm rooting for, but Baker's definitely a good contingency plan to have in the event that goes down. Maybe eventually Baker Mayfield has another opportunity to show that if you put him in a good scheme with a smart head coach, then he could win games for you. Without a doubt, this is way better than where he was about three weeks ago. It's an upward trend for him. But as for the Las Vegas Raiders, they don't have any room for error anymore. They have to win out the rest of their games if they want to be a playoff team. Honestly, it could be way worse. You could be the Denver Broncos and thankfully they're not, but I'm sure Raiders fans expected a little bit more from this team when they brought in Josh McDaniels and Devontae Adams in the offseason. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this game. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.